Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. You may have seen our last video called It's Hip to be Square with the beautiful Lamiki fabrics. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I love all the different textures. It just has a lot of balance and it was just satisfying to make. I've got the scraps left over from that quilt and we always have scraps. Every time we cut a quilt, we have a lot of scraps. And so we don't know exa exactly what to do with them. These are all strips. So I took all of my strips from this and I made these fun little squares. And so this is what I'm going to show you how to do today. These can be made into a pillow. You could take a lot of them and make a whole nother quilt. So grab your scraps from the last quilt you cut and let's get started. I have a group of Amy Butler fabrics here. Now these are scraps. And we always have these, everybody has these when they cut a quilt out. These are all the width of the fabric. And I have various sizes here. Now the easiest thing to do is as you are cutting, take your pieces and just take your scraps and just cut them straight. It doesn't really matter if they're an inch or an inch and a half or two and a half inches, but it does help if they're straight. So if you have one that's all crooked, straighten it off and just gather them all up. So I've got quite a variety here. And so I don't think I'll use this cream one because I might use cream for my accent color, but you just want a nice variety here. I'm going to make these squares all with this one collection, but you can gather up your scraps from three or four quilts and blend them all together to have a really scrappy project. I'm going to use a product called Stitch and Tear. This is stabilizing paper that you can stitch on top of, but it tears away pretty easily. So I've cut some squares that are seven and a half inches. You can do different sizes, but seven and a half will make a nice patchwork block. And I would like to have my stitching line right along the diagonal. So I need to draw a line that's one quarter inch over from the diagonal so that when we, when we stitch here, the line will be right in the middle. So draw that line across all of your squares, one quarter inch away from the center. Now we're gonna take all of our scraps and our paper right to the machine. So I'm just gonna put this lump of scraps on my lap and I'm gonna take the first paper here and we are going to put one of these strips right along that line. And I'm just going to cut off some of the excess so I don't have it hanging off while I'm working with it. We're going to save this because we will use it again. Now we're going to take another strip, just a random strip, and we are going to put its raw edge along this raw edge. Now this one happens to be the same size, but you might pick up a wider or a narrower, and that's okay. The point is to line up these two raw edges here. You just need this sticking off the top just a little bit, just a little bit extra there and a little bit extra here. Now we're going to stitch right along here using a quarter inch seam. Again, I think I'm going to get some of this excess out of the way so it's not heavy there. I'm just going to slide this under here and I'm going to stitch quarter inch from these cut edges here and I'm just holding everything in place. And I'm using a pretty small stitch length. That way the paper will, will tear away easily. So use a lot of stitches per inch. And you can sew all the way off. Now we are going to open this up. Oops. We want to finger press this really, really flat. You can iron it if you'd rather, but I do find that the finger pressing works really, really well. And now I'm just gonna take a, the next piece and it's gonna go here. So we're gonna put it right sides together there. So I'm trying not to be too picky about what's going where, but I just wanna get a print we haven't used yet. Let's try this grunge here. So all it has to be is beyond here, just a little bit, just beyond the paper, a little bit. Put it right along the edge there, hold it and stitch quarter inch. So you can veer on there if you want, as long as you're straight before you get to the paper. So 
So I'm going to keep adding pieces and finger pressing this open as I go until I am all the way off of the corner of the paper here. This patchwork part is all done. So I'm only covering up half of the block with the patchwork strips. The other half is going to be with one whole piece of fabric. You'll notice it's curling just a little bit because I haven't ironed it yet, but that's okay. When we press it and pull the paper off, it will lay completely flat. So you can see on the back here, there's fabric beyond the paper everywhere. And that's what we want because we're gonna trim all of this excess off. So I'm gonna make three more of these and I'm gonna, just gonna do the strips on there not exactly the same. I want them all to look slightly different, but from the same group of fabrics. Hi, everybody. Donna asked me to come down and find a coordinate for this project. So I'm in our shop here. Let me close the door. It's kind of loud. We're on the street here. I have something in mind from uh, Moda, their grunge line, when I saw this. Let me see if I can find that right now. I'm going to find where they put the grunge. Oh, here's, so here's the grunge over here. Mona makes this nice line called grunge. I'm looking for something, a color called sugar cookies. I don't know if I have it. It doesn't appear. Wait a minute here. Let's see. Yes, here's all the lights down here. That wouldn't be bad, but that's the sugar cookie has a little blue in it. And that's not it. I have it in some pieces, but not on the bolt. So I'm going to look for something else. This... This here is a possibility, but it's a little, this is gray and I'm, I'm, I'm not thrilled with that with this. The sugar cookies has kind of a bluish aqua color in here. So I'm going to set this here and look around some more. We have a bunch of cut yards from when we used to do a lot of shows. And this is some grunge here and yeah, that, that's the one I'm looking for. If you see this little blue in here. And I like that real light color in there too with this. I think it'll be great. I think that picks up the blues. We're in good shape. I'm gonna take this back up and show Don and see what she thinks. Next step is to steam press these really flat. So you can see it's curling just a little bit. But once we press it out, I'm gonna press from the front and from the back. Then I'm gonna flip it over and steam it a little. You can see it's already getting really flat and everything relaxes into place. So it's nice and flat. Now, Matt picked out this fabric here for the accent other half here, which looks really good. So we're gonna cut this into some eight inch squares and then cut them in half on the diagonal. Now I'm gonna cut this in half right along the diagonal. So these are going to get sewn onto the block and these are a little bit bigger than we need and that's okay because we're going to trim off the extras afterward. Now we're going to put this triangle for this half of the square on here. So remember when we started, we moved over a little bit and that way when we sew our seam right now, it's going to be right on the diagonal of the square. So this is going to go like this and it's cut quite a bit bigger and that's okay. You just want to look and see if you've got a little bit this a little bit beyond that paper there and same thing down here. It's a little bit bigger than we need and that's good. So we're going to line it up and stitch using a quarter inch seam again. Now we will take it over to the ironing board, iron it nice and flat, and we'll trim off all the extra. Now that we've got the corner triangle on, we're going to flip this over and we're going to trim everything even with the paper. So I'm just going to put my ruler on the edge of the paper and I'm going to cut away all of that excess there on all four sides. There, now it's starting to look really, really nice. Beautiful. Now we just need to take off the paper. So I'm gonna kind of hold that part down on that side of the stitching and get it started. And it will just tear away. 
And then I'm gonna grab in here, get it started just a little bit, hold that so my stitching doesn't come out. And it will pretty much tear right away in one little strip. So I'm gonna take off all the paper and any little bits that are left off and this is why you want to have small lot of stitching, small stitch length, because this will come apart real easy. Now, if you do your stitch length too little, the paper will start to tear away while you're still working with it. So you don't want that, but this works really well. I have tried this method with copy paper and with newsprint, and I think this just stabilizes it a little bit more, but you can do it with those other papers. Now we're ready to stitch the four blocks together into a pillow top. Now you have options here. I think this is how I'm going to put mine together, but you could face all, oops, face all the darks inside. That would be very interesting. You might have to move them around a little so it's balanced there. You can also turn them so that you have two diamonds. So you could do it like this. It's kind of like putting a log cabin together. You can make a lot of different shapes with the four. So it might depend a little bit on what your quilt looked like as well. So you may have a certain pattern quilt that this pillow is going on where it may help you decide what shape to put them in. But I'm just going to put mine together like that. I've cut a small border that I'm going to stitch all the way around the pillow here, and then I'll show you how to finish it up. I have the border stitched onto the top. I cut the border one and three quarters inches, and this is actually going to end up as a little decorative flange on the pillow. Then I stitched this to a piece of scrap batting, and I stitched it carefully one quarter inch from the edge because we are going to be stitching the back on from this side, and I want to have a nice straight stitching line to follow. So I have a piece of backing here, of a piece of fabric, the full width of the fabric, and it's a little bit wider than my pillow. And I'm just going to split it along the fold here. And then I'm going to take one half of it, the selvage, with the selvage end here, I'm going to put it pretty straight on here and I'm going to fold back about three, four inches. I'm going to move it up a little bit farther than halfway, maybe even a little bit higher. Then I'm going to take the other half and this is the side with the selvage and I'm going to put this right along that selvage and then move it down about two inches, flatten everything out again and I'm going to put some pins around the edge here. I'm just going to pin through all the layers so that everything will stay put till I get to the sewing machine. Now I'm just going to stitch the pillow front to back and I'm just going to stitch right inside my previous stitching. Almost on top of it, but just right inside it. Be sure to remove any pins before you stitch over them. Now we're just going to trim off that excess batting and backing. So I'm going to trim it to about three-eighths of an inch away from the stitching. And you can do this with your blade if you like. I'm just pretty used to doing it with the scissors. And it doesn't have to be really, really straight along there because it's going to get flipped to the inside. And the pillow form is going to push that all into the um, edges anyway. I'm also going to trim off some of the bulk in the corners. Now, to flip this, it's really easy. We're just going to reach inside here, turn it right side out. So this is an envelope style pillow cover. It's the simplest kind of pillow cover. So we can reach back in here, flatten everything out and poke out the corners and get it nice and flat. Now I'm going to be making this pillow flanged. That means I'm going to be stitching right here through all the layers. So I want this laying really, really flat. So an easy way to get this seam right in the middle and get it really flat is to flip it over and then squish it back. So there's about a half inch of back showing there. And then take your fingernail or your fingertip and draw it right along there and flatten it out. Then 
use your hands to iron that flat and you'll get that seam right in the middle and the whole thing will get really, really flat. Otherwise, it's really hard to get that laying right in the middle. So I would do that around all of these edges. Just squish it out. The batting that's behind the top makes the seam want to go that way. So all I'm doing is then flattening it out and then putting it right in the middle and then hand pressing it. It makes it lay nice and flat. So I'm just going to keep flattening it and then I'm going to get a little pin and pull out my corners so they're nice and straight. And then we're going to top stitch here through all these layers right in the ditch and then the pillow will be stuffed here and the flange will be nice and flat. Now the blocks that we made, they don't take very much fabric. I mean, I've got all of this still left over. So if you want to keep making more blocks, there's a lot of things you can do with these. So I've got 16 blocks here and I'm going to lay these out. I think I'm going to make a little quilt here. Let's see. I think I can make, you can, I can do a four by four quilt here. So let's do a star. Let's do it like this and we'll put that same thing over here. So now you can see the star around here and you've got this central design in here. And this is just one layout you can do with 16 blocks. So I may try a couple different layouts. I may try a table runner. I'm going to just mess around with all these blocks, but you see the possibilities. You can keep going and make a whole quilt if you have a lot of scraps. So I'm going to finish this up and we'll see what we come up with. Here's our finished pillow with the pillow inside of there, the little flange around the edge. It's got that envelope opening in the back. So simple to make. So this is the quilt that I had scraps from. So it matches, it's really fun. Just a nice accent. This might go over on a chair or on a couch, or you can put it right on there. Now, the other scrap project we were doing, this is the two hip to be square, all neutral, all very serene and calm. And then with the scraps, I added the turquoise just for a color pop. So this would be really nice on a dresser in the bedroom where this was the quilt. Sometimes you just need a little bit more color in there. So these are really fun projects to do with your scraps. And you can see a runner just looks really good with these. Hi everyone, I'm Matt Jordan here in Grants Pass at Jordan Fabrics. I'm in our studio. We're going to be giving away this King's Crown quilt, which was the original quilt that we made when we started the pattern. Um, I had gotten in some beautiful batik fabrics. Donna and I saw this pattern and really liked it. And we this was our prototype, so to speak. I remember Donna telling me, just make it, just cut a little mat and we'll try it out. But I kind of cheated and, and cut quite a few of them. And luckily for me, it was They've been very successful, and you have a chance to win this quilt. This is the, a little package now. We're, we're doing more of these king's crowns. I've got that kind of upside down, but you can see it there. And this was a little baby quilt. It's been a really neat pattern, but this we're going to give away. And good luck. I hope you win it. To enter the giveaway for our beautiful king's crown quilt, all you have to do is go to our website and put in your email address. Now, the contest is open to everyone worldwide. We can ship it anywhere in the world. I will put a link to the giveaway in the description below. Thank you so much for watching our tutorials. We really appreciate getting all of your comments and questions. We try to answer as many of them as we can. Happy quilting.